Today, we're talking about a D90 soft top by Helderberg, and probably the first thing you notice is the color. But before I get into the build, let me tell you, there's a couple more D90 soft tops sitting behind us that we built that we started the process a long time ago. So if you're the type that just can't wait, well, fortunately, we do have a couple available right now at the time of recording this. All right, so let's get into Stoic. Why the name? Well, Stoic is... Uh, it's not your typical Land Rover Defender, meaning the color, the headlights, the, the LED marker lights, the wood flooring, just as we go around, you're gonna see a lot of subtle differences to this that keeps that classic look, that classic design, but this has actually become a gentleman's cruiser. So let's just put it that way. Starting with the color. And I've said it that it's not a, a Land Rover color, but what it is, it's actually an old vintage Ferrari color that uh, you probably have never seen on a Ferrari since they all seem to be red. But this color in person is absolutely stunning. It's not a metallic blue, but it's a, it's a solid glossy blue with no metallic flake. But the color is just stunning. I mean, it's, it's close to the Porsche Albert blue with a little more dark in it and a little, just a little hint of purple, I would say, that's in it. Um, but it's dependent on the light. So color's fabulous, but let's now move to the engine. The engine is a 300 TDI turbo diesel that's been performance tuned, meaning it has a larger turbo, it has a larger intercooler, it has a performance cylinder head, it has the Helderberg performance exhaust in it, transmission's been re-geared, which is a five-speed manual transmission in it, and the front and rear differentials have been re-geared. The reason for that is to be able to reach those highway speeds. D90 soft top, highway speeds, the two don't really go together because it's got the aerodynamics of a brick and the soft top can get a little loud, but surprisingly, it's not that bad. And this can definitely be a four season vehicle, even though it's a soft top just by the improved heating system and the improved air conditioning system on it. And then the top is actually a three ply top that has an insulating factor in the center. So it's, it's a pretty thick top. It's not your traditional canvas top that we grew up with many years ago. Starting with the front end of it, you'll notice that it has the I would say the typical look of a Land Rover grill, and then we put the oval badge, which is actually an aluminum cast badge, and then it has the billet aluminum Helderberg headlight surrounds with the LED lights and the LED marker lights. So again, we, we kept it pretty classic, but we put a little pop, and the thing you probably noticed the most is the silver Defender letters, which is probably the number one preference for 95% of everyone versus Land Rover, but it wouldn't make sense to say Land Rover and Land Rover now, would it? Silver galvanized bumper, and uh, it just gives it that classic look. This one, I debated whether or not I should put the rope on front, like I've done on some of the other ones, like Verbosca and Derwent, which you can check out on Helderberg.com. But I guess, what's your opinion? Rope or no rope? I don't know if this is really a nautical theme, uh, borderline, it might be, but I'd like to hear your comments. Moving to the bonnet. The bonnet is a Puma bonnet, which actually has the hump in it versus the recessed one. I just prefer the Puma bonnet. It gives it that little more modern look. And you'll see that on all the Helderbergs, pretty much all, but let's say two. Moving to the vents, the vents are billet aluminum. They are a brushed aluminum. And then even the hinges are billet aluminum, which is a brushed aluminum. And uh, when we move over to the side, I, I think you're gonna see the perspective of how it just has a very nice pop to it. So here we are at the side of Stoic, and I just wanna be quiet for a second and let you take it all in. And I want you to think, what's the first thing that stands out? What's the first thing that really, that, that you notice the most? All right, time's up. So would it be the door hinges? Would it be the mirror arms? Would it be the actual door handles? Or would it be the silver galvanized step-up bars with the mahogany treads? Or would it just be the overall look? So there's a lot of things going on, but designing a Defender, it's everything has to flow. And I think that's what we're really great at at Hildeberg is making sure that everything flows, that nothing is really competing that looks like it was bolted on in an afterthought. So let's start with the door handles. The door handles are a solid billet aluminum Helderberg door handle, which actually has the grooves right here, which is much nicer than the standard Land Rover Defender door handles that are plastic. They're just a hard, 
ABS plastic and they feel, they just feel normal, let's put it that way. So billet aluminum, solid billet aluminum, all metal parts here, made in the UK. And then billet aluminum on the door hinges, also made in the UK and the actual, the arms here that hold the, and there's an option too to actually put lights in here. So you would have puddle lights, but hey, it's a Land Rover Defender. It does not have a computer. Not that you need a computer for the lights, but let's not overcomplicate things, just letting you know that's an option. Looking at this one too, you would probably think, oh, is it lifted and it's not lifted? This is a 235-85-16 on a modular type wolf style wheel. It has a, a little more of a, a heavy stance or let's just say it looks almost lifted, but again, it has not been lifted. I just wanted to have a little bit of that rugged appeal and that's a KO2 tire. Generally I do a KM3, but on a soft top of this style to make it flow, we went with the KO2. The step up bars, again, I mentioned the mahogany treads here. So we hand make these and it actually has the caulk in here. So it has a, a nice rubbery feel just so it's more gripping power, but it just, it blends with the inside. And when we get into the inside, you'll see what I mean. Moving down, it has standard arches here. The wheel flares are a standard size, they're not big. And then we have the tan soft top and the windows go up really quick. And this top, you can take it off in about five to seven minutes and put it back, one person, and put it back on in about, let's say 10 to 12 minutes. It's really quick. It's as quick as just unzipping it right here. And then it has a flap where it flaps under. So you just have to unflap it like that. So it's just a hard plastic flap that goes under this actual lip here. So that makes it really fast. And then of course you have your bars inside, but easily roll it up and then attach your straps here to hold it for a more open airy look. I like soft tops a lot because they give you the option to have multiple different looks. This is your first look with the top all done. This is your four season look. And then when you move into the cooler season that's not all the way cold, then you can roll up the side windows, roll up the back windows. That's your second look. And then your third look is top comes off completely. And this one does have what we call the hoop system. So it doesn't have a roll cage, but it just has the hoop system, which actually requires this extra bar right here behind the seats to hold the seat belts. So all I gotta say is the color is nice and complements the wood very nice too with the silver accents. So now let's move to the back because I'm excited to show you the back and then we'll get into more of the interior of the driver's cockpit. So now we're at the rear and probably the thing you're noticing here is the galvanized corner braces. So this is a Heldeberg design cue. This is something we've been doing for a very long time. And the reason that we do that is, again, it's a pop of color, it's an accent piece. It shows it's not your standard everyday Land Rover Defender. And like I said, we've been doing this for a, quite a long time now. But what we're also showing too by doing this is we're showing you that a Helderberg Defender has been completely disassembled. We go all the way down to the frame, strip the frame, and then build it back up piece by piece. So this is not a, let's say a refresh restoration. That's not what we do at Helderberg. Everything is a complete nut and bolt restoration that everything has been replaced. Everything is, it, it is a 1996 model, but it does have all new parts, all new components. I mean, all the way down to the seat frames that are custom sized to the driver. So again, everything's replaced and you should see these spot welds that it's showing you. There is no Bondo because we do replace a number of body panels. If a body panel's damaged, which you can expect there's going to be a number of body panels that are damaged, then we replace them, we don't fill them with Bondo. So if you don't see those spot welds and a Defender, then you know that there's probably some Bondo body filler in there and it will come back to haunt you in a matter of time. So moving to the rear end, what I wanna show you on this D90 soft top, cause I get a lot of people that ask me, can I, can I have a hard top and can I make it a soft top? Well, the first thing you'll notice is the door that's on a D90 soft top is a half door versus a D90 hard top is a full door with the glass. So you can take the top off on a D90 hard top, but then you're gonna have this full doorway that's sticking up that's gonna look, it's just not gonna look good. 
Uh, the tire swings away individually, which is a nice touch because personally, the tire on the back door does put more strain, more weight, and makes the door a little harder to open and close. But that's a design cue that happened many years ago and a lot of people still want it. But I do like a D90 without a tire on the back. But again, this one swings away and then the door itself opens up again, being a half door. All right, so now let's move into the inside because I've got something special to show you and I hope you like it as much as I do. So looking in the back, the first thing that I think you would notice other than the seats with the basket stitch is the black walnut floor. So I wanted to try a different wood on this one and what I did is black walnut. And I have to say that the, the grain and the color that came out is absolutely beautiful. So what we do with the floors where you see the black lines, this is actually a marine grade caulk. And then we cover, cover the entire flooring itself with a marine grade lacquer. So if you know what a Chris Craft boat is, uh, same process that they used to use on the Chris Craft boats. So the floor is durable. Black walnut's a very dense wood. Um, it will take a lot of abuse and over time it will get that nice little patina. I have a lot of people ask me, well, is the floor actually attached, you know, to the to the really the bed of the truck and no it's not this is a piece of wood it's kind of heavy it probably weighs about 50 pounds so it doesn't slide around and it sits on top of the carpet so you can remove it if you need to in case you need to carry something in the back of your defender that could really tear the floor up but i think it's just a really nice touch now the question is does this lend itself to a nautical theme or not and i think it can go either way looking at the interior You'll notice the color of the interior. I think it complements the exterior because this is a color that's pretty close to what Ferrari used to use. And in fact, I think they still do use somewhat of this color occasionally, but I think it goes really nice. The stitching on it is a darker brown, a chestnut brown is what it is. So it gives it a really nice contrast. Center facing bench seats, seating for four with seat belts. So I'll just let you take this in and then we're gonna to move to the front and we're gonna talk about some things that we did a little different in the driver's cockpit. A question that I get a lot is why two different lights here, meaning why the white one and why the red one? And a question I get a lot after a client gets their Defender after they get their Helderberg is, or a, a statement I actually get is, I only have one backup light. Well, European, you only have one backup light. So this is your backup light here. So when you put it in reverse, that light comes on. And this is your fog light, which there's a switch on the dash. And if it's really foggy, you know, it normally is in the UK, then you flip that switch. And this is a very bright red fog light for people to see you going down the road so they don't rear end you. So I just wanted to clear that up, but all of the lighting on it is LED. This is a modern lighting, so it is nice and bright unlike your traditional Land Rover Defender. And I mean, even the inside, the gauges are also LED lighting. All right, so now let's move to the inside and talk about something really cool in there. So we're inside the cabin in the sense of the driver and passenger cockpit. And I don't know if I should say there's a lot going on in here or the simplicity makes it feel completely different. So I'm gonna say that there is a lot going on in here, but the simplicity definitely makes a difference. So I just repeated myself on that. But looking around, you'll notice um, as you're looking around, there is no Apple CarPlay touchscreen. Imagine that. So this is definitely a great vehicle to, to go and take your boat out, to go into the woods, just to enjoy your company and enjoy your surroundings versus one more gadget. I think you know how I feel about that. But I'm like everyone else, or maybe I'm not. I do like some really, you know, I like music, but I also like that classic feel of music. I mean, jazz and classical and all that. So why not be more fitting than a Marshall amp? So in the center console, that's what we did. We installed a Marshall amp speaker, which in fact is Bluetooth. So if you need your navigation, you do have turn by turn, uh, you know, directions in the sense of a voice, but you don't have a touch screen to, to flip around with. Um, leather dash, billet aluminum hinges, lower leather dash, 
uh, lower, low sung, swung air conditioning system. And the reason we did that is because we didn't put the Apple CarPlay center console in where the vents go and all that. So we wanted to keep that classic look. The interior is a very nice beige. Again, it's pretty close to the old classic Ferrari color. And even the sun visors themselves are done in the leather. It's the Ferrari color is what it is. So a lot of attention to detail. And uh, maybe my most favorite thing, hmm, I don't know if it's the gear shifter knob or the basket weave stitch, stitching or the Marshall amp. There's a lot of things in here I really like. So just watch the video, take a look. And if you want to see more details on Stoic, Heldeberg.com, be sure and subscribe to our YouTube videos. We're always putting new videos out, doing new adventures. And if you're ready for a D90 soft top Heldeberg, then reach out to us. And uh, But hurry up because I know you want it in time for whatever you have coming up. So let us know and we can start the build process.